All right, Pouring Nation, today I wanna to walk you through how I decide what I'm going to do for my painting. Now today I've decided I wanna do a black background and I wanna do mica powders that are mostly transparent as a Dutch pour. So knowing that, knowing I want a white background, knowing I wanna use mica powders, the next question is, okay, what type of medium are we gonna use? I have lots of different mediums, glue, Liquitex, uh, Floetrol, lots of different mediums here. And what I've decided is I want lots of little cells, which leads me to either just water or Floetrol. And in this case, I'm gonna use Floetrol. So the next question is, okay, what am I gonna use to get my uh, powders integrated into the paint? And one thing I've done in the past, uh, I know I'm using Floetrol, which is a latex uh, paint conditioner. So, and I know because this video I'll link in the description above that mixing some paint with Liquitex and some paint with Floetrol doesn't work very well. You get some odd color combinations and I don't want that to happen. So I can't use Liquitex to be my quote unquote wedding agent for the mica powder. So what I've decided is I'm going to use this Valspar High Gloss Enamel Base C. It's already latex paint and uh, it works well with mica powders because this is what people use for the Shelly Art Blooms. So what I'm gonna do, just to show you here, is I'm going to, so I'm gonna take my iridescent red put a mask on first and actually first I'm going to get about 10 grams of my base C latex paint and I bet you that's about it but let's double check so I need a little bit more So now that I got 10 grams of that, now I'm going to get my medium here. Two of these small nail thumbfuls, probably a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. And then we're just gonna slowly mix that in. So now I have my base paints, and I'm going to use one part paint, one part Floetrol, and then water to make it a consistency that I want. And for this, I'm just gonna use one part paint. I'm gonna use this Craftsmart Black, and one part pouring medium. And next I need to cover the sides just to make sure that they get all painted. So I'm gonna do that here, and we'll be right back. And as I do with all of my paints, I want to do a quick drip test. I made two cups of the black, so... That tells me that my blue and my green are just slightly... thicker than the rest, so I'll add a little bit of water to those two. All right, so I've painted my edges, and I went to test the paints that I was using and realized that they were way too transparent, that it just was not gonna work. So I added a half a, one of the little scoops of a darker color to give it a little bit more opacity. And this, and this is the one part Floetrol to one part of the paint mixture that I had with the mica. So we'll do it over here where you can actually see. See how it's creating a tiny mound and then disappearing? That means it's still too thick. Make sure I scrape the sides. Not spill on myself. See how it's still creating a little bit of a mound when it goes in? a tiny bit more water.
Now it's just immediately integrating. That's exactly what I want. All right, so now we have all of our paint done. We're gonna take this off. And start with our base coat. Now this is a 24 by 30, which normally would need something like 30 ounces of paint, but because we're putting a base coat on and just a little bit of paint, I'm gonna be using slightly less than that. Although I think I need a little bit more out here. So I'll probably be using in the end 25 ounces or so. And then my dryer I'm using on low heat and low power. Now we will pour on our colors. Start with red. Gotta go. And we're gonna go purple. I think I like that how it is. All right, so let's go in for a close up here. There are a ton of these sections of cells all over the place that I just love. What I'm hoping happens is as this dries, the color becomes a little more muted except for in these really bright areas. And so it's a really kind of a delicate, shiny color coming out of the black. And like you see here, it's kind of what I'm expecting once it dries, but just a ton of cells. I like that I got some solid color, which will give it a nice focal point. One of the things that I know a lot of people like, but I really don't like, but I like is these edges where the, you kind of get hidden paint underneath and then it starts popping up. It's like a ghost section. I really like that. I got one right here and I got another one coming off here and all those beautiful cells, but man, that is one of the reasons why I like using black and iridescent and metallic paints so much is because you get these, it just jumps off of the canvas that way. Now, if you want to learn the ins and outs of the Dutch pour and some tips and tricks that can save you some time and money, this is the video for you.